I have another flashlight review for you. This time it is the Through Night Black Scout Survival version of the H01. And I'll tell you right now, I like it. And if you're interested in finding out why I like it, keep watching. So as always, I just want to point out that this flashlight was sent to me by Through Night for testing and review, and I did not pay for this. So what do I like about this flashlight? Well, before I get to that, I thought what I would do is take you down to the tabletop, go through the specifications for this flashlight, we'll go through its modes of operation, and then I'll discuss some of the pros and cons, but of course we'll get outside and do some testing with it as well. So we're going to take a look at the specifications as well as the accessories that come with the Thru-Night H01 flashlight, then we'll go into the modes of operation for it. But to begin, just before we do that, uh, I just want to point out that this again is the Black Scout Survival version of the H01, which was a collaboration between Thru-Night and Black Scout Survival and they did come up with this nice dark matte green color for the headlamp and if it looks familiar that's because the H01 is also or the, excuse me the W1 is also the matching one to this flashlight which I reviewed previously and just remember that pocket clip because I'll come back to that pocket clip in a minute when in relation to the uh, H01. So the H01 is a headlamp it is two and five eighths inches in length overall and at its widest it is seven eighths of an inch. It comes in at 2.7 ounces but that includes the battery and the headband so everything I have here in my hand is 2.7 ounces. It uses the through night proprietary 16340 battery with a 650 milliamp charge but once again like the other fl flashlights it will use other brand 16340 batteries and you can also use the CR123 batteries in it either the rechargeable or the non-rechargeable versions for it although they won't have the same intensity as the 16340. It comes with a micro USB charging port, not the newer uh, USB-C type, but the regular micro USB port, which is fine because, you know, there's plenty of those cables around that you won't have to worry about not having a cable to fit this. And in fact, one does come with it, which I'll demonstrate in a second. It is waterproof to an IPX8 standard, which is two meters underwater. It is impact resistant to 1.5 meters. And it has uh, a unique, like the uh, other flashlight, the W1, this has a magnetic tail cap. And I think I can demonstrate that here with this ruler. So you can see that it hangs on quite well and doesn't fall off easily. You know, I suppose if I really gave the ruler a shake. So that's kind of unique. So it will stand upright like this and you can use it to just stand upright and, uh, and use the flashlight. So that's kind of a unique feature on this. So what does it come with when you get it from through night? Well, it comes in this, yeah, so this is the right box. And in this box, there's very few things. A, a micro USB to USB charging cable, a set of spare O-rings with two caps or two replacements for the charging port cover, and the instructions. What more do you ask for? Nice, simple little box, no frills, and nothing that you don't need. And as I mentioned, it does come with this headband. Now, in this case, it's a camouflage headband, which doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but one thing that I noted about it was is that it's unlike some of the others I've had, and I, I do have a few headlamps, uh, this one is quite comfortable and quite stretchy and large enough. <laughs> I know this is not an issue that other people may have, but I have a rather large head, and I find a lot of the headbands I don't have enough uh, room on them for, to wear comfortably for any length of time, but this works just fine. It's mounted to the headband with, with a nice soft rubberish, I don't know what, it's probably a synthetic uh, ring mount that will allow you to slide the headlamp in and out. You can take it right out of that mount easily enough. And to change the position of the headlamp so that it's aiming forward or down or up, you just rotate it within the mount itself. So it's not the head that's rotating, it's actually the whole flashlight that's rotating inside of these rubber rings. I'm gonna take that off right now, just for a second off of the mount because I wanna show you something. I mentioned a minute ago the pocket clip that comes with the W1 flashlight is also removable. It's on snug enough, there we go. And I think I've shown this before, we'll just show it again. This is the two-way pocket clip so that it will 
work onto a pocket this way, but you can also put it onto a pocket that way. That's kind of nice because it gives you options. You can mount this quite easily, the smaller W1, on the brim of a ball hat as a headlamp in and of itself, and that works. But what I liked about it, and the reason why I wanted to show this to you, is that you can use it also on, put it on this way, it would probably be better, you can put this right on the H01, and now I can mount this on a backpack strap, say a, a chest strap or any little strap, or on a pocket in my shirt, so that, that can be held upright like this and then function from up here, so I don't have to be wearing it around my head if I have it. It would be nice if you can purchase one of these uh, two-way pocket clips to go with this as an accessory. Even nicer, of course, if it came with it. But I just wanted to point out, if you happen to have one of these headlamps that, or one of the other flashlights with a, a two-way pocket clip, likely it'll, it'll fit on this one as well. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna leave it off while we do the rest of this demonstration, which is, of course, the modes of operation. All right, let's have a look at the modes of operation and the different levels of illumination that come with the, the H01 flashlight. So everything is operated from a single button on the top of the flashlight, which is quite quite large, as you can see, and very easy to access, and there's no trouble being, uh, you know, being aware that you have your finger on that. So I'll start with the Firefly mode. So like the other through-night flashlights, you depress the on button for about two and a half seconds or so, and you, you strike up the Firefly mode, and as I've said, before, not very bright at 0.5 lumens. Bright enough, though, that you don't lose this in a uh, darkened space, and bright enough that I can see myself, or see my way around in a tent. Not bright enough to read by, though, but bright enough for at least some basic uh, functions. It will last, though, for 15 days, which is what makes it great. So I'm not too worried if I leave this on overnight, so that I, if I have to find it in the dark, that uh, uh, I'm going to wear the battery down by doing that. So that's a, that's a rather nice feature. Turn that off. Now, just turn the flashlight on. Let's see where I'm at. There's the low mode. So the low mode is only six lumens, but it will last for 60 hours. Now, six lumens doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, six lumens is plenty to read by. At least I find it with this headlamp, because of course you're only about 10, 15 inches away from the headlamp when you're reading. So six lumens lasting for 60 hours is great. Let's take it up to medium. At medium, you've got a reasonable amount of light, enough for most of the uh, activities that I'll be doing around a campsite, such as starting fires or, you know, preparing or, you know, cooking a meal, even navigating in the woods at night, as long as it's not too rough a trail, 50 lumens. And that 50 lumens will last for seven hours. So I like that. That's a good long period of time. It's not an extremely long period of time, but it'll work pretty good for most of the nighttime navigation I'm likely to be doing. Now I'm going to be turning that off. Off, turn it on to low, oh. one, there we go. So now we're at high, and high is quite high at 195 lumens. And that'll last for 100 minutes, so well over an hour and a half. So that's quite bright, very bright for navigating in the dark. I don't think there's too many trails or too many situations that I'll find where I'm hiking in the dark that I'm going to need more than 195 lumens. So 100 minutes is, is not a long time, but it is plenty of time, especially if you are just trying to get out of the woods at the end of the day and you just need that little extra light for a period of time. But we can do one better, and that is to take it up to turbo. And like the other through-night flashlights, to activate turbo, it doesn't matter if it's off or in any of the original low, medium, high modes. Double click, and I come up to quite a high, 687 lumens. Now that's only gonna last for 75 seconds, and then the heat protection circuitry is gonna turn it down to 205 lumens for 85 minutes. So again, almost an hour and a half. So that's still very bright. That's just a little brighter than the high mode. So uh, again, another good amount of light for navigation or anything else that you're gonna be using for this uh, headlamp for. So just before we head outside, I just thought I'd take a moment to show you what it looks like while I wear this flashlight on my forehead or this headlamp on my forehead. And you can see how easy it is to access the light. And now I can turn it down just by rotating it in its mount so I can work at anything that's down below eye level. Now, uh, 
I'm saying that, showing this to you for a reason because I don't see a lot of other people talk about this. They probably do it. They just don't talk about it on video. And that is during the winter, I wear one of two hats, either a toque you know, or, or a beanie, depending on what you like to call it, quite thick wool ones. And I would not be able to wear this on top of that thick wool beanie. That or one of the bomber style hats, either one, it's not going to work for wearing this flashlight. But something that people don't often talk about is wearing it around your neck. And it works just as well hanging it around your neck. You're just going to have to re-angle the light so that you can still have it aimed where you need it to be. So I just wanted to point that out that there are options for wearing this in the, the winter time that you don't have to worry about it not fitting over the hat that you have on. Okay, let's get outside and do some nighttime testing. So like I have done with other flashlights in the past, I'm going to demonstrate the H01 indoors in my basement in my gear room with the lights off and uh, then I'll go take it outside and we'll take a little walk around the property. And the reason I'm doing this indoors is because this is a flashlight you might well use indoors. It's small enough to be carried as an, an EDC or everyday carry flashlight and certainly if I was working during a power failure, which can happen here during any of our snowstorms this winter, then I may want something like this to move around in my house with. So let me turn the light off and I'll have it on low. So there is the flashlight on low. My basement is actually showing up better in reality than it does on the uh, camera, as I can see. But I'd like to have a little bit more light than that so we can take it up to medium. So on medium, I've got plenty of light, to be quite honest. This is quite nice. I'd be easily able to maneuver around the house and outdoors with this, as you'll see in a few minutes' time. But let's see if we can get it up to high. There we are. That's high. So this is the high mode. Again, more than enough light. And let's double-click. And now we're on turbo. And really, it just it's bright. It is very bright in this room. And I haven't shown you the SOS yet, so let's see if we can do that. One, two, three. There we go. Not that that means anything indoors, but I'll do that again outdoors just so you can see what it looks like. All right, let's take the flashlight outdoors. All right, so I'm outside of my home right now in my driveway, and you can see there's a bit of snow. The illumination that you do see on camera is from the street light right out uh, at the edge of my driveway. So I'm gonna turn on the H01 headlamp, give you an idea. I think I have to turn it down to low first. So here's low. Low is not all that bright, but uh, you know, yeah, it's a bit too low for using it outside and around. Bring it up to medium. Now medium, now that is a very functional level intensity as you can see. There's high. High is considerably brighter and let's get turbo and turbo is that much brighter again. All right, let's go around the back of the house where there is no illumination. So I am in my backyard at this point and there is no illumination off of my house or the house next to us. So the only lighting that you can see right now, those pins of light are from the houses uh, connecting backyard. So they're a good distance away. So now I'll turn the headlamp on. Let's get it down to low. So even at low, there is a fair amount of light. Now it is a flood pattern, so it's not gonna cast a long ways out to the trees at the back of my yard. You can't even see those yet. But for walking, uh, the, where I'm shining it now is 15, maybe 20 feet away. So plenty of illumination for walking right now. But as you can imagine, it's, quite, it's, it's probably reflecting off the snow and making it appear quite bright. And it is plenty bright for this. Let's take it up a notch. So there's medium. And medium is now casting so that you could probably see right to the back of the yard, but let's see if we can get it to high. There, high. High is picking up the trees in the backyard. Not really, really well, but again, this is more of a flood pattern than it is a thrower. And now let's get it up to turbo. But turbo picks up everything in the backyard, the trees, lights the whole back up. That's plenty, plenty powerful for a headlamp. Now, just for the fun of it, let's throw it on the SOS. 
And that can be seen at a fair distance if necessary. If, so, if somebody's looking for you and you are staying in one spot, they'd, they'd see this a fair distance off. All right, let's take this flashlight back inside. So just a few closing thoughts on the Thrunite BSS H01 headlamp. So I have a few headlamps. I like wearing headlamps when I'm around the camp. It just means hands-free. And, you know, I do a lot of reading in the evening times because the nights can be long, especially during the winter. So having a headlamp is a real advantage. Now, as far as na navigating through the woods go, yes, you can do that with a headlamp. And I would for short periods of time. But if I was doing a full-on nighttime hike, I would either be looking for a headlamp of a significant more power than this or use this as a backup to a handheld flashlight that has a good brightness and a good runtime. But even so, this makes a great little flashlight for short-term navigation or short-distance navigations because it's plenty bright for, bright for that and, you know, not hard to recharge either. So if you're out for a couple of days, recharging it from a battery bank or a solar panel uh, is quite easy to do and it recharges fairly quickly. So what are my final thoughts on the Thrunite BSS H01? This this has now become my primary headlamp for all the uses that I'll be using headlamps for, that is, and it will act as a backup. This will go in my, my bag, my day hike bag, and definitely in my overnight bag. And I say in my day hike bag because, of course, in the winter, you never know that something could happen. You end up being there out there overnight and may be able to get out of the woods if it's not unreasonable. I may not be able to get out of the woods, and I need to be able to start a fire and maybe build a shelter, and this will provide me at least that much light. And as you saw when I had the outside, uh, doing the testing outside. I hadn't mentioned it before, but it does have that SOS function. Not extremely fast, but fast enough that if someone's looking for you, it will last a long time. And, uh, you know, it'll allow someone to find you. So my overall thoughts is I'd like it. I would purchase it if it had not been sent to me. I like the fact that I was able to test it out for myself. But uh, yes, I can recommend this wholeheartedly as a nice little headlamp. Okay, if you have any questions about the H01 or anything else for that matter, please put them in the comment section section below. If you have any comments, or maybe you own the H01, if you have anything else you'd like me to review like the H01, please put those in the comments section before. And as I mentioned, I'll be putting all the information about where you can purchase the through night flashlight in the video description. That's all I have. So in the meantime, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.